So hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the stream power index using SRTM DEM in RGIS Pro. So now let's get started. So the stream power index is widely used topographic index in hydrology and geomorphology that quantifies the erosive power of surface runoff based on the terrain slope and contributing drainage area. The SPI is an important tool for understanding the soil erosion, sediment transport and hydrological process in a watershed. It is derived from the digital elevation model and it is extensively used in GIS to analyze the landscape susceptibility to erosion and predict the potential flood prone areas. The concept of stream power is based on an idea the ability of flowing water to erode and transport the sediment is a function of both volume of water and the slope of the terrain. So the SPI helps in identifying locations within the watersheds that are more susceptible to erosion due to the combined effects of flow accumulation and slope steepness. It is particularly useful in environmental management, soil erosion planning and flood risk assessment. So the stream power index can be mathematically expressed using uh, this particular formula that is SPI equals to A multiplying tan beta. So here the A which represents the specific catchment area which represents the upslope contributing in an area per unit contour width and measured in uh, meter square by meter. And the tan beta is uh, represented as the slope of the terrain in uh, degree or radian. So from this equation uh, which indicates that the higher value of SPI corresponds to the area where there is a significant accumulation of water and a steeper slope which results in a greater erosion potential. Conversely, the lower SPI value corresponds to a flatter area with less water accumulation. So let me get back to our GIS Pro and to add the DIM data first we're gonna navigate this option called in map section and in that we're gonna click this option called add data and we're gonna click this option called add data to the map. So now navigate to the folder location where you have downloaded your SRTM DIM. So now I have navigated to the folder location where I, where I have saved my DIM data. So I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna click OK to add the DIM into RGIS Pro. So now you can able to visualize this is our DIM data and which is highest elevation was indicated to be around 3000 88 meters and the lowest elevation is around 763 meters for this specific study region. And in the video description, uh, how to download the SRTM DEM will be given in the description section. So you can go through how to download SRTM DEM using USGS Earth Explorer. So first we're gonna navigate to a geoprocessing tool. So for that we're gonna navigate to the section called analysis and in that we're gonna click this tool called uh, tools. So once you did that a window pop up saying geoprocessing. And in that, in the find tools, we're going to enter as fill tool. So once you entered as fill tool, so we're going to navigate uh, this particular tool called fill spatial analysis tool. So you can able to see here, so it has navigated to the fill tool. So we're going to double click to open this tool. So the description about this tool is the fill sink in a ra surface raster to remove a small imperfection in the data. So you can go through this. And now on the input surface raster, we're going to select my DIM data. And we're going to choose our output file location where you could like to save this data. So now I have navigated to the folder location where I'm going to save my filled, uh, filled data, that is filled raster. So we're going to enter the name as fill.tiff. So entered as fill.tiff, I'm going to click save. And leave the rest as default and click this option called run. So it is currently executing our fill tool. So we have our fill tool here, fill raster. So we're gonna turn off this dim data. So next, we're gonna search a tool name called uh, flow uh, direction. So we're gonna enter as flow direction. So now here you can able to visualize, we have the tool called flow direction. So we're gonna click this. So you can go through the details of this tool. So it creates a raster of flow direction from each cell to its downslope neighbor or the neighbors using D8 or multiple flow direction or D infinity method. So in the input surface raster, so we're going to select the fill uh, tiff. I'm going to click this and choose uh, choose your output uh, folder location where you could like to save your flow direction raster. So now I have entered as flow direction uh, dot tiff. I'm going to click save 
and next uh, we're gonna leave the rest as default and the flow direction type I'm gonna select this particular method that is D8 and uh, we're gonna click run to execute this tool so now we have our flow direction uh, raster so you can able to see here so now navigate to a search section that is the geoprocessing window and in that we're gonna enter a new tool called flow accumulation so you can able to see here which is available in the spatial analysis tool and in the hydrology we have the flow accumulation tool so we're gonna click this so now in the parameter section in input flow direction raster I'm gonna select my flow direction raster and choose your output file location where you could like to save your accumulation flow accumulation raster so now I have entered as flow accumulation dot tiff so we're gonna click save and in the output data type uh, we're gonna select as a float and the input flow direction type so we have previously selected the d8 as our flow direction type so selecting d8 so we're gonna click run to execute this code so now we have our flow accumulation raster so you can able to see that so once you ran flow accumulation raster so the next tool we're gonna search is the slope tool so we're gonna enter as slope so we're gonna select the slope spatial analysis tool so you can go through the details about, about this particular tool so it identifies the slope from each cell of a raster and the input surface raster we're gonna select our fill.tiff and choose your output file location where you could like to save the slope raster so in the output measurement we're gonna select as degree and we're gonna leave the rest as default and uh, we're gonna click this option called run and uh, we're gonna click this option called run to execute our slope tool so now we have our slope raster so you can able to visualize here we have our slope raster so you can also change the number of classes here for example I'm gonna right click and in that we're gonna navigate this option called symbology so in the symbology the method I'm gonna select is uh, equal interval and you can select uh, the number of classes here for example I'm gonna select five classes and uh, you can select your color ramp of your choice for example so I'm gonna select uh, this particular color ramp or you can choose your other color ramp of your choice for example I'm gonna select this particular color ramp so now we're next uh, we're gonna navigate to raster calculator so we're gonna search by raster calculator so now we have this tool called raster calculator spatial analysis tool so now we're gonna apply this formula to calculate uh, the stream power index so make sure that you follow this step so first I'm gonna select this particular raster called flow accumulation I'm gonna double click so next I'm gonna click the sign called multiplying sign so I'm gonna click this so next I'm gonna multiply by the dem size so the dem size of uh, the dem cell size is 30 meter so the SRTM dem has a cell size of 30 meter so I'm gonna enter as 30 so next I'm gonna multiply I'm gonna use the multiply sign again and we're gonna multiply by tan so we're gonna navigate this option uh, the tan so now I have navigated to the tan I'm gonna click the tan here now place your cursor inside the tan function and uh, I'm gonna select the slope raster I'm gonna double click this so inside the tan function the slope raster we're gonna multiply by a unit uh, unit uh, unit factor so we're gonna click this option called multiply option so we're gonna enter this unit uh, the conversion unit to convert from a uh, degree to radians so we're gonna enter this particular unit to convert the degree to radians that is 0, 0.0 one seven four five so this is a conversion unit to convert our slope and degree to a radian so for that we are using this uh, we are using this conversion unit so the unit conversion is 0 0.017453 and now we're gonna choose your output file for folder location so we're gonna enter as stream power index SPI dot tiff 
So we're going to click save. So once you did that, we're going to click this option run. So we have an error. So it can able to visualize. We have a, a raster calculator failed. So we have this error. So you can able to see that I mentioned this particular output raster. I have mentioned uh, dot, I uh, have mentioned comma instead of dot. So we're going to uh, correct that. So again, I'm going to enter as SPI dot tiff. So we're going to click save. And now let us run this code again, run this uh, tool again. So we're going to click this option called run to execute our uh, raster calculator tool. So now in the content section, you can able to visualize uh, we have our SPI uh, raster, the stream power index raster. So let us apply the symbology for our stream power index raster. So we're going to right click and uh, navigate this option called symbology. And in the primary symbology, I'm going to select as uh, classify. And in the method, I'm going to select uh, the equal interval. So or you can select uh, any method of your choice. For example, we can select natural bricks. And you can select a uh, color of your choice here. So for example, in color scheme, I'm going to select this particular color. So once you apply symbology, I'm going to turn off all of the layers here. For example, I'm going to turn off slope, low accumulation and other rasters. So now I'm going to zoom into this part of the study region. So from the color code, you can able to visualize, visualize the red, which indicates the, which indicates the highest level of stream power index based on the values. So you can use your, uh, we have previously stated the interpretations. So the higher the value of SPI, which corresponds to the area where there is a significant accumulation of water and the ste steeper slope, which results in a greater erosion potential. And conversely, the low SPI value corresponds to the flatter area with the less water accumulation. So based on our uh, interpretation here, so this particular area is in the red color, which indicates a very high stream power index. So which has a, has a very high potential to erode uh, the soil in those regions. Comparatively, the low SPI value, which indicates the less water accumulation and the red, which typically indicates the, the high erosive action of water, which is clearly indicated in red color. So the red are the areas which indicates the high erosion activities in the study region and the green areas, which typically indicates the depositional areas or the low erosive areas. So in this way, we can able to identify the high erosive and depositional area in the study region using stream power index. So here the red, which indicates the high erosive areas and green, which indicates the, the low erosive areas. So now let us take a look at the application of this particular uh, method. So the application part, the soil erosion risk assessment. So SPI helps in identified area prone to severe erosion by locating the zones with high runoff potential and steep slope. It's useful for the land management practices to prevent uh, soil degradations. And next is the watershed management. So used in hydrological modeling to determine the potential flood prone areas within a uh, catchment helps in developing an effective water uh, management strategies and flood risk uh, analysis. So identifies an areas with high surface runoff potential and assisting in flood prediction and mitigation planning. And uh, last is landslide susceptibility mapping. So SPI is integrated with other topographic indexes such as the topographic wetness index to model the landslide prone areas. And agricultural man land management so helps in farmers and planners to design effective uh, drainage and soil conservation strategies to prevent nutrient loss and soil erosions. So in this video, I have shown you how to calculate the stream power index using SRTM DEM in RGIS Pro. So thanks for watching and uh, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and give us a like.